President Obama, um, <laughs> obviously, outside of being one of the most brilliant minds on the planet, um, he's actually a huge movie lover. And, um, and he was a fan of the book, huge fan of the book. It was on his reading list. And he was committed to making this into a great movie. So he was involved ever, uh, from script to, to post. Um, and he, he you know, gave notes on the disaster elements, on the character, on the theme. Um, it was a wonderful collaboration. Okay, guys. So The Beast, which if you guys have been watching my channel by now, you should have already known who he is. He has helped to co-produce this movie, which is called Leave the World Behind. And this movie has gone viral over the past couple of weeks, and for good reason. Now, this movie contains a lot of symbolism and a lot of predictive programming, which has been strategically placed there by the Beast himself. And I'm not going to go over the lot of what was shown, but my emphasis will be what occurred at the very end of the movie. Now, before I get into that part, I just want to mention quickly here that one of the scenes in the movie that had to do with an oil tanker crashing up on the seashore is one of the most important cryptic messages of this entire movie. I can tell you with confidence that when I saw this movie and I'd seen that scene, the revelation came instantaneously and the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me that that scene with the tanker crashing up on the shorelines had to do with just how quickly the Lord Jesus will come. And if you'll notice that written on the side of this giant ship was written and clearly visible, the word White Lion, which represents none other than the Lion from the tribe of Judah, King Jesus himself. He is the White Lion. And so his coming can be compared to that ship that very few people are paying attention to. And then it suddenly caught them off guard and crashed upon the shorelines. For it is also written that, like a trap, his coming shall come upon all who dwell upon the face of the earth. Now, like I said, this movie contains a lot of other symbolism that are scattered all throughout the film. And they were strategically placed there so that people may pay attention and get a glimpse of what is to come. I also remembered a very interesting quote from one of the characters in the film. And I think the name of the actor is uh, Ethan Auk, I think. And I remembered he said something very interesting. He was telling this other guy that he cannot do anything without his phone and his GPS. Which basically means that if these things were to be removed from him, he would be left completely incapacitated. And I imagine it would be the exact same for a lot of people today. Now, let's get back to the main part that I want to share with you guys. Trust me, beloveds. Whenever you see both the Beast, who is the future Antichrist, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself are sending you warnings about the exact same thing, you would better pay attention. Now, there I was watching the ending of this movie, completely unaware of what I was about to witness. And then I saw it, a nuclear explosion. And then a few moments later, another bomb was dropped. And then when I'd seen that, I started getting goosebumps, beloveds, because I felt as if I was in a deja vu. I was literally witnessing what I'd seen all the way back in the month of March in 2023 in a vision that Yah gave me about the rapture. Beloved, in that vision, I saw not one nor three. I saw two exact nuclear bombs going off. One went off and then a few moments later, the other one went off as well. And I was witnessing this happening in the distance in the same manner as those two women that were standing at the edge of the forest and looking at the mushroom clouds in the distance in the city. When I'd seen that scene, I was filled with goosebumps, beloveds. Because I already knew it. Yah had already shown it to me in a vision. And so I knew that this was coming down the road. But then having to see it again coming from the beast himself. And if you'll notice that it took place in New York City, in the heart of Babylon. Even just as it is written, all over there in Jeremiah chapter 50 and chapter 51. So now, for anyone who have not yet seen this movie, if you don't want to see the entire movie, you can skip all the way to the end. And you will see that Babylon was struck with two nukes, just like I saw in my vision from March. And so here I'll share a very short clip of my vision, so that you guys can hear the account of what I saw. And if you wish to hear the entire account, I will leave links in the description box and at the end of this video. Hello guys. 
So I had this very interesting rapture dream on the morning of the 6th of March. And I believe the Lord wants me to share it with you all. So in the beginning of this dream, the setting was pretty much like it is right now. The world was on the brink of war. And the tension between nations was just growing by the day. Now, I remember that I was with a family member. And suddenly, a nuclear blast went off in the distance. This blast occurred in the day. And so we were all able to see it. This blast was so spectacular. It was both spectacular and deadly at the same time. I remember standing there looking at it in awe as I watched the massive mushroom cloud forming out in the skies and billowing and also spreading out in every direction. Now, while everyone was still standing there, including myself, and still watching the spectacular destruction, another nuclear blast went off in the distance as well. And then I started thinking to myself, this is it. This is the end. And I also remember thinking that with these blasts, nuclear radiation is coming, which is not good. But also, with my knowledge from previous visions given to me by the Lord, I knew that the rapture should occur at any moment. And that's exactly what happened, beloved. The rapture occurred simultaneously while these two nuclear blasts went off. I literally saw a group of men were walking, and one of them vanished right from the midst of them, leaving the others perplexed and looking around for him in confusion. When I had seen this, I immediately dropped to my knees, and then I started praying. Now, while I was praying, I lifted my head, and then I saw a man walking towards me. This man was first invisible, and while he was walking, he was materializing, literally. He was becoming visible and heading directly towards me. This man was walking with a walking stick, or a staff, and while he came yet closer... I then knew instantly that this man was the prophet Elijah from the Bible, the Tishbite. I was surprised. Even in this experience, I was surprised, beloved. I didn't expect to see Elijah at all. Anyhow, he came towards me, and then we started walking away from there. And then he started to counsel me and to teach me a lot of things. Beloved, I'm telling you the truth. This man, this prophet, Elijah... He knew me. Now, upon waking up, I didn't remember much of what he was telling me. The Lord didn't allow me to retain that knowledge. But I knew it had to do with a lot of important things that I will be doing concerning my future from that point.